We don't always want to see data in the same way as stored in the database. Often we want to take data that's stored as rows and show it as columns. We want to pivot the data. That's what this next video is about. Enjoy! Short two minute sessions designed to help you solve real problems, not just wander through the syntax. In this session, we're actually doing what I call bits and pieces. And what do I mean by bits and pieces? Well, you remember at the very start of this video series, we talked about the fact that we were covering chapter 18 in the Data Warehousing Guide, SQL for Analysis and Reporting. If you go through to the end of that chapter, there are some various operations that aren't particularly analytics, but they're all about doing analysis on data. So it's time to cover them off. So today, we're gonna to talk about pivot and unpivot. Rows to columns and columns to rows. That's what pivoting and unpivoting is about. Taking rows, making them columns, taking columns, making them rows. Let's look at today's requirement. Your boss says to you, I need sales by product category for each quarter as soon as possible. Now we don't need to go into the specifics of this query. We can just see it's a complicated query joining a couple of tables from the supplied sample schemas. But the key thing here is our result. We can see that for each product category, for example, electronics or hardware, we have the quarter of the year, January through to April, April through to July, July to October, and October through to the end of the year. And we have the quantity or the sales for each of those product categories. So we get four rows per product category. At this stage, your boss goes, no, no, no. Don't you know anything? I want the quarters to go across the page, not down the page. That's because most managers think that we have crystal balls as developers and that we can look into exactly what they're thinking. So what do we normally do? Well, we might take that data we've just laboriously come up with, paste it into Excel, and then what we do is we do in Excel what's called a pivot operation. We create a pivot table and we drag our columns in. And as you can see, we've actually transposed the data to be rows and columns using a pivot. Let's do it now with SQL. So when we're doing a pivot function in SQL, here's our base query. You notice now I'm not actually doing any aggregation. There's no sum clauses there. We're going to pivot the data first and aggregate as part of the pivot. So there's our base data. This is how a pivot looks. This is where the aggregation occurs. I'm going to pivot the count of the rows for the quarter, the quarter being the actual time of the year. And then for the various values that might come out of quarter, we might get January and we're going to call that column Jan, makes sense. And for the value April, we'll call that column APR and so on and so on. Then we simply do a select of those four columns. You can see at the very top line, January, April, July, and October have become columns now as a result of that pivot. And we can see there the result set is as before, but now the four quarters go across the page as columns January, April, July, and October. And that's simply how a pivot works. You don't need to do it in Excel anymore. You can do it straight from SQL. At which point I'm sure your boss will come back to you and say, hmm, maybe you were right all along. Maybe it should go down the page. So let's take that query which has the pivot in it, the one we just did. Let's create a table called pivoted sales. This is going to be the base for our data that we're gonna now unpivot. If we look at pivoted sales, it's like our source data now actually came into us as four separate columns, one for each quarter. We wanna turn that back into rows like our original query. The unpivot clause is very, very simple as well. This is how it looks. We do an unpivot command on line three and then we had this syntax. Let's explain that a bit further. The column values, the actual data in our count star, that becomes a column called quantity. Then what we do is the column name becomes quarter, that keyword quarter there, and the values that go into that column are January, April, July, and October, the source columns in our pivoted sales table. So when we run that, we can see how the data has been produced to us. It looks very similar to our very first query. Four rows for each product category. You can see the quarter column there contains four values, Jan, APR, JAL, and October, and the quantity has been mapped as before. Now what about missing data? What if our product category, our pivoted sales table, only had data for hardware for January, April, and July? We didn't record any data from October through to December, so we didn't get any sales. By default, when you unpivot that, you'll only get three rows. You'll only get the rows for where there are not null data. You can override that behavior by including the include nulls column. And then even if there is a null for one of the columns, you still get a row. As you can see there, the row for hardware for October 
has been brought into the result set. You can run these yourself by clicking on the live SQL link below. In the next session, we're going to talk about partitioned outer join, another one of those bits and pieces in chapter 18. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to keep it simple with SQL. We'll see you all again soon.